Oh, hey YouTube, how are you going? Well, today we're going to talk about convergences. What luck, here's one I made earlier. We're going to be talking about what creates convergence, how they form up, how to spot them in the air, and also how to make the most of them to improve your flying. Okay, let's dive into it, shall we? So what is a convergence? Well, it's basically where two air masses meet. And this can happen in a number of forms, including sea breezes, lee convergences behind mountains and hills. Mountain ranges can cause convergences, and just air masses colliding, adiabatic and katabatic winds. Today we're going to look at sea breeze convergences. The sea breeze front is the most commonly known type of convergence. And it's very distinctive and easy to see thanks to these what we call daggy bits hanging down from the clouds. So dags are affectionately named after uh, what's hanging off a sheep's bum normally, matted up wool and stuff. Anyway, we have a lot of that in New Zealand. The little tufts of cloud hanging down off, off a convergence cloud, uh, we call them dags. So a sea breeze is generally caused by the air mass inland heating up and creating a lower pressure environment that then sucks in uh, air from the ocean. Now the air from the ocean is normally cooler and that comes in from the coast and uh, collides with this warmer air mass inland. That creates these little mini sea breeze fronts. You generally have sinking air on the seaward side of the convergence. And on the inland side you generally have reasonably good thermic conditions. And along that sea breeze front line you often get that warmer inland air being pushed up and creating a higher cloud base right next to some of this lower moist air cloud that's some of it's being forced up uh, alongside this warmer drier air and you end up with these daggy bits hanging down. So another key detail about a sea breeze convergence is the coastline is not usually perfectly straight as you'll get the sea breeze starting to push in earlier in the day and then it tends to push up into valleys and lower lying areas with more force and you actually get cold air going up these lower lying areas sooner than the higher areas. This can create all kinds of interesting things with your convergence line and often it's not a perfectly straight good convergence line especially if the ground underneath is quite rough. So you need to look at the terrain and have a think about how that's going to influence sea breeze coming in. Later in the day it often becomes strong enough to push in over the, uh, the hills and you end up with a good strong line and eventually it can wipe out the whole of uh, uh, the whole region or area or even the whole um, island in New Zealand. So as soon as you've got wind it can reinforce the sea breeze and help it along and help push it over the hills and uh, cover out, wipe out a bigger area. A sea breeze is essentially like pouring cold water on a hot pan. It just kills all the thermal activity. You'll find the thermals start getting really choppy and that's usually a good sign that they're being cut off by this colder air and you don't get decent thermals forming anymore when you were earlier. So let's have a look at that in practice, what it actually looks like. All right, here's another convergence that we're flying. There's the west coast westerly coming this way and you can see out to my right here, there's daggy clouds and things hanging down all these little bits so and if we look along in front of us you've got a step clouds out to the right so it's a classic convergence there'll be some moisture air coming up the valley on our right here creating that lower cloud colliding with this gentle easterly coming the other way right now my hawk says we've got five knots from our left which makes sense we're on the left hand side so there's still left hand easterly breeze going this way colliding with that westerly and if you look out it's just so much lower cloud base out to the right there because that's moister air the ocean is closer and we can use these to just travel along in a straight line as far as we can really there's another big line to our left here that might be another the breeze might be coming up the valley there and creating that line but notice there's no low clouds there so maybe that westerly isn't reaching that far. The best places to climb in these things are right beside uh, where the low cloud is. So you want a shelf 
with a solid looking base because that's where it's actually colliding and I didn't lose much height going along there 500 feet and as I approach this next bit of cloud air where it's actually colliding up we go we're going up here so I'm just going to stay on the left hand side of these clouds and oh here's a really good bit that's six knots I might do a couple of turns there just to get us back up to 6,000 feet if you look back you can see all this low cloud out to our left in the shelf on the right there and then as we come along beside this I don't need to climb right to the top because as I know as we go along here we'll climb and then when we hit the next flat bit we'll climb there as well so you know they're a reasonably reliable source of lift can be patchy so for example there's this bit here but then uh, I notice there's no more it just it runs out here so that's the end of that line of convergence and I'll probably these clouds at the end here should be working I'm just going to turn around fly around this blob of cloud get up into this um, shelf that's on the left of it here you see little wisps coming up here that's little bursts of westerly moist air coming up I don't want to go too far into that. If you find you have wisps on the left hand side of you, instead of if you're flying this way, you know you've gone too far over. Well, I moved over to get into this other bit of convergence. Look, there's a bit going up there on the right, so we'll just go to the left of it. And I bet we'll hit good lift all the way along here. Dark cloud above, low clouds to the right. Ripper doing 90 knots here. Oh, not super strong, but not bad. New Zealand is a great place for this kind of convergence flying because we've got coasts on every side of the island, so but there's still a big enough landmass to heat up and cr suck, create sea breezes. Up we go. Okay, well, I'm heading in the towards Norfolk Gliding Club which is over by Taranaki and you can see we've got a massive convergence with a step and a the sea breeze front there so oh, gonna have a little run along here why not so here's a nice view of us cruising along you can see the convergences again low clouds out to our right where the breeze is managing to get up through the terrain from the, the coast there is where it's creating these low bursts of cloud, I suspect. And we can just cruise along here without stopping. There I turned around. We're now heading back north. And I could have kept going, but I ran into airspace. But you see we've got these bursts of, uh, bursts of energy being sucked up into these clouds. This is a classic run. You can see the upper cloud curling over and coming dumping down in places as well which is interesting but uh, I certainly didn't get much sync don't forget to check out our new tracking system puretrack.io for the best way to share your flight adventures with your friends and we've got of course the pure glide merch store with all your favorite t-shirts and hoodies and hats all right thanks for watching YouTube hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll catch you next time